What up, this is July from Kickback Couture. Today I will be going over how I chop my samples in Serato. So let's talk about how you can do it and what you can do it and more me just showing you what I do. So this is my process. I won't talk too much. I will explain things every now and then. But for the most part, I'm just going to chop as if I'm going to create a beat without teaching. So first thing I do is listen to the track. I've already listened to it all the way through. Second time I go back and chop parts that I like. So I like that part. I think I could get it a little closer, so I'm going to zoom in. See how that sounds? Cool. Zoom out. Gonna get that part right there. Where this rim hits. Let's see. She goes down in her pitch. It's closer this way. Kind of changes colors when she changes pitch, so that helps out too. And I'll do that too. Zoom in so I can get closer. Move it up this way. Always chop a little bit before just to be safe. You want it to, to play right when you touch it. If you're on your pad, you want to make sure the sample plays right when you touch it and there's no other way. I think I need to move a little bit. Snare, rim shot, hits. like that too. So rather than create a loop based off the slice points I made in this sample in Serato, 
I decided to go a different direction and use the pitch shift ability with one slice. So. <laughs> And that was cool to me. So this is what I got based off what I programmed. And I built a basic drum framework around it. And from here, I would go on to add in my bass line. I could even filter the bass line out of the sample and bring it up a little bit. This is what it sounds like. Once you get down your basic loop pattern, you will go on to programming switch ups and stuff like that. And if you want me to show you how to do that, then I'll do it in another video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, and most definitely let me know what you would like to see next.